So what is the UAE doing that is different <laughs> to encourage this presence of uh, this creative presence of women in technology? The UAE today is let's say supporting women, empowering women like no other country. Hmm. Uh, Tell me in what ways? Many ways. You see women in leadership roles across all domains. And the way our leadership honors, the way our leadership celebrates, the way our leadership empowers women is creating a narrative. And this narrative is changing how the world, the world's perception around women leading in the region. Welcome back to KU Pulse, the podcast. My name is Dr. Glenda Algamal, and I'm a senior lecturer in the general education department at KU University. Today, we have another success story from Halifa University. Today, we have Ms. Rauda Albulushi, and she's a senior manager at the EDGE Group, and she's in the Space and Cyber Technologies Cluster. Now, as well as being a Halifa University graduate in mechanical engineering, Rauda also worked in France on the Falcon Eye project, and she also has an MBA from the London Business School. Also, Rauda, I think you have involvement in the UAE National Experts Program. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Thank you for hosting me, Glinda. The National Experts Program was created under the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, the ruler of the United Arab Emirates, and under the direct supervision of His Highness Sheikh Diab bin Mohammed. And the purpose of the program was to have 100 Emirati experts in different fields. Uh, the main purpose is basically a human capability building and a national capability um, development, let's say. And you work in the field of space and cyber technology. Space and cyber technologies and Edge Group. And what inspired you initially to get involved in this field? When I graduated from Khalifa University as a um, mechanical engineer, I joined at the beginning, it was Aliyah Sat Communications Company, as a projects engineer. Um, I was not related to, I was doing more of a project engineering work, proposals, commercials, and all of that. And then from there, I got the opportunity to join the Falcon Eye program. So I was a bit excited to do some, let's say, technical hands-on work. And it was, um, it was mainly working on two, um, let's say, Earth observation satellites um, in a field office in France uh, with uh, two of the main, let's say, big elephants in the space sector. So it was an exciting opportunity, and this was my, basically, introduction to the space field, let's say. And now you're a senior manager at the EDGE Group. Yes, correct. Now, the EDGE Group has become a kind of symbol of the UAE's national technological ambitions. So what is the UAE doing that is different <laughs> to encourage this presence of, uh, this creative presence of women in technology? The UAE today is let's say, supporting women, empowering women like no other country. Hmm. Uh, Tell me in what ways. Many ways. You see women in leadership roles across all domains. And the way our leadership honors, the way our leadership celebrates, the way our leadership empowers women is creating a narrative. And this narrative is changing how the world, the world's perception around women leading in the region. So you said some really important words there. You said celebrate, empower, really important words about inclusivity for women in this field. And it's really a role model for a lot of uh, nations around the world to follow this. It's been typically a very male-dominated industry. So I'm sure in your journey in this, you uh, have a lot of experience and you have some lessons about inclusion, leadership, mentorship. Is there anything you can share with us about that? So one of the most important lessons I've learned in my career or in my, my, my 10 years experience is that it's not about the number of women in a room or the number of women in a team. It's about having the seat on the decision-making tables. What's important is uh, in leadership, let's say resilience, empathy, 
these are skills that women bring naturally with them. And um, they are really essential when it comes to leadership roles in defense space and cyber. So you, you're bringing empathy and the humanistic element yes. as well. And it goes way beyond just a tokenistic presence of women, as you say. It's not about the number of women in the room. So in the UAE, women are having real a real voice, aren't they, in the strategic field? There's a, a saying, isn't there, you can't be it if you can't see it. So you're a role model, aren't there? I'm sure there's many young women out there, young women scientists, young women engineers, who will see you and think, wow, that could be me. So what... Um, what lessons would you, or what advice would you give to them if they were starting off in either the defense field or the cyber technology field? One advice I would give women is to take the opportunities that come across them. Take them, be brave, try, learn, be ready to fail, and learn from that failure. I would love to see women leading technologies that protect the UAE and ensures its readiness in a world that's rapidly evolving. And how can we get more young women involved in STEM from an early age? What would you like to see in the education cent uh, sector from a young age? Probably raising awareness when it comes to education, but not only that. I feel there's a responsibility on me and all the other women leading in STEM to provide opportunities for young women to involve them, to bring them along, to let's say, maybe mentor them, show them how the real life in STEM and leadership is, to inspire them. And now let's talk about um, technology and technological capability. The whole world is going through a massive technological shift. You know, for example, with AI, cyber technology, growing automation. How is that affecting national capability in the UAE. So this provides opportunity for people, for engineers, for students to contribute to digital transformation in many, way, many, many ways and means, of course. So the UAE is investing heavily in Emirati talent development. At the Edge Group, can you tell us how this talent development takes place? So at Edge Group, whenever we start any program, there are three main elements we look into. The transfer of knowledge, the the gaining of the actual technology, the ownership of the actual technology, I must say, and the human capability building. These three elements is what we focus on. So um, Edge Group is involved in innovation. In space and defense, though, you require a lot of precision, particularly in defense. So how do you foster a spirit of innovation and creativity in an environment where you have to be very precise? When it comes to the defense field in, sec uh, in, uh, in general, uh, we do foster innovation a lot, and especially in, in edge, because we do a lot of advanced technologies. But with that, we do apply extreme security measures. What sort of security measures? It's actually about keeping it very tight and uh, let's say, in a way or another, secure. Of course. Well, can you perhaps then talk about how the sectors of space and defence are quite overlapping fields? Can you talk about how that is merging and how women are increasingly involved in the space and defence sector? We probably touched base a, uh, a little bit about that earlier. When you have overlapping sectors, you create opportunities and you create new, let's say, roles for people to to pursue or to contribute to and this is uh, this is the merger that happened basically between defense and, and space space today is the backbone of defense when you speak about space you speak about navigation you speak about intelligence you speak about many other elements you know and this again provides various opportunities for engineers and for the people of the UAE to contribute to how do the technological innovations at EDGE, how do they align with the UAE national vision? They go hand in hand. You know, uh, today when we work in the space sector, we work along with the space agency. And similar to the other, let's say, domains as well, it's always aligned with a bigger strategy within the UAE. So there's a full horizontal integration yeah. of all the sectors. Correct. 
We also have the UN Sustainability Goals. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was preparing for this, I looked at the specific goals that it particularly aligns with. So in particular, SDG 5, which we touched on, which is gender equity. Mm -hmm. um, SDG 4, which is about education. And you touched on that before also talking about education and preparing women and young men and Emirati young talent in STEM. Uh, SDG 8, SDG 9, about industry and infrastructure, and SDG 17, which is about that collaboration, both nationally and globally. Is there anything you would like to say about how the EDGE Group is working towards those sustainability goals? At EDGE Group, we work across all those goals, to be honest. And maybe one, one important aspect that we didn't touch base on is collaboration. Mm. Tell us about some of those collaborations. It is very important to work hand in hand with with different uh, different entities, different different uh, let's say governments, different countries. Making the right partnerships with the right partner is key. Today, no country can reach, let's say, the peak of innovation in silo. In silo, we have to do it with the right partnerships and the right uh, collaborations. Let's say. Mm. So, Rada, we're going to time travel. We're going to go to 2030, five years in the future. What do we see? Where are we in terms of technology? Or what would you like to see in terms of technolo technological innovation in 2030? And what would be there in terms of gender balance and collaboration? In 2030, I would love to see women leading technologies and not just being part of meetings uh, boardrooms, you know, I would love to see them on the front lines, making sure that the UAE is technologically ready for the rapidly evolving world. And Rauda, how do you keep inspired in this journey of cybersecurity and defense and space? What motivates you and continues to motivate you? What keeps me inspired is seeing the generations coming after us dreaming bigger because of the paths we've created today. Waking up every morning and knowing that I contribute directly to the, let's say, national strategy and to the defense sector, and I knowing that I contribute to the well-being of the country is what keeps me going. Um, maybe on another note as well, um, when we speak about women in leadership, all women our sisters, mothers, wives, and we contribute in a way or another, in an office or in a house, in a family or in a park, let's say, in the development of the next generations, in empowering the young people and giving them the, and creating the right environment for them to strive, to try, to learn, to grow. And maybe this is one of the things that, um, we as Emiratis are, are lucky to um, to contribute to. And again, with with what we see now in the country, um, year of um, the community of the community. Mm -hmm. And next year, 2026 has already been announced as the year of a family. So today the woman contributes to the full community and has an impact on the full community. And it's more than great to see that leadership both support women, uh, our leadership in the UAE supports women, empowers women, but also is now supporting the growth of families and the, uh, let's say, um, the well-being of families and women. Inspiring words, Rada. Thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you so much, Glinda. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And if you'd like to keep up to date on all things STEM related... Please like and subscribe to our podcast on Spotify, YouTube or SoundCloud. And if you'd like to be a guest on our podcast, you can email us at ku.ac.ae forward slash KU Pulse and submit your request. And we'll see you back next time.